is there an ideal space for the work of Dan Flavin? I, I think the answer to that is no. Dan would take a found space and place his found objects in that space. And with that, we learned a valuable lesson. Dan would exploit the conditions or reveal the conditions of that existing space uh, by the careful placement of his arrays of fluorescent lamps. Uh, it was a revelatory experience for me to see his critical response to an existing condition, either whether he was um, enhancing it or uh, reducing it or um, uh, in some ways uh, respecting its history. Uh, from this, I learned a valuable lesson in creating new spaces for the work of Flavin or other artists of his generation. And that is that the, we couldn't design, or that we shouldn't design, a so-called a so complete space. That the spaces that, that we designed were, were completed or qualified by the work that was to be installed in them. Uh, sort of what, one that uh, would be completed by extension by the experience of the viewer within the space and the viewer's relationship to the work space that they occupied. Um, uh, the, in, uh, this expression, the incompleteness of a space uh, to be completed at a later time is uh, a slightly uh, arbitrary one. And uh, what does it mean? Uh, it means that there has to be a certain degree of uh, uh, open-endedness to the space or an adaptability by either the, the artist or through the curatorial imperative installation of the artist's work. Uh, the spaces were neither neutral, uh, uh, nor were they the simple frames, but they were intended to interact with the specific types of work from this period uh, that were in some ways references to the, the spaces of production or the spaces of presentation in the 1970s and 1980s.